Howdy folks and welcome back to another episode of Tyria Talk. My name is Richie and this show is all about the remarkable MMO Guild Wars 2. Today is episode number 40 and today we're going to be talking about the trading post and the economy in Guild Wars 2. But real quick before we get into that, just a quick update about the issues I had at launch. Uh, I never got my original account back. Um, I moved on, I started playing on the new account and I've now surpassed the level of uh that I was in the first account. So, I closed my support tickets and I am moving on. So, thanks for everybody with the uh anybody who gave me uh words of support and kindness. I appreciate it and uh now it's just time to play the game and and move on. Fresh start. Okay, now on to today's topic. Today we're going to be talking about the economy and the trading post. And first, I just want to point out a few things about the trading post that are a little bit different than other auction houses I've experienced. So if you're new to the trading post, haven't used it yet, uh, this might give you some, some insights, some good information. I would go out on a limb and say this is probably the most sophisticated auction house uh, slash trading post kind of thing that I have seen personally in an MMO. There are some features to it that make it a little bit different. Um, the first being that the economy or the trading post is, is cross server. All right. So you're not just dealing with an economy that's based on your server and your server alone. So in a game like World of Warcraft, you could actually log into different servers and you could see that the economies were, were very different. Sometimes things would be, you know, on a very populated server, you'd have a lot more supply and prices would be down. And the reverse was true on a less populated server. So that's an interesting aspect because we have, thousands upon thousands and uh, of players that are contributing to this one trading post and so supply is really really kind of huge right now um the other interesting thing is you can also you can put up um just like a normal auction house you can say i want to sell x amount of items for this amount and you put up you know basically a uh, a sell order, uh, but you can also put a buy order up on the auction house on the trading post, which means I am looking for a hundred, you know, stacks. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for a hundred pieces of copper ore, and I'm willing to pay this price per ore. And you put that out there, and then uh, somebody who has that wants to sell it, they can sell their stuff instantly to you by, you know, taking part of your uh, buy order. So it's cool that you can put up both buy and sell orders. And what it does is it creates this extra kind of a little bit of a game where you could say, you know what, I need to sell, I need to sell something right now and I can get a little bit of uh, profit or I can get just a, a, a decent price by just taking one of these buy orders or I want to make more money on this. So I'm willing to put a sell order up here and see if anybody snags that. So, uh, it, you know, I, I think that adds a different dynamic. Um, the other, the other feature, features that uh, are interesting to me is one, you can actually put things up on the trading post and buy things from the trading post anywhere in the world. You can, you know, if your bags are getting full, you can throw some stuff on there and that's just really great. Now you do have to actually be at a trading post to pick up your profits or pick up any items that you purchased, but you can use the trading post from anywhere, which I think is great. The, uh, the final thing I'll, I'll mention about it is you have a really cool little snapshot uh, when you first open up the trading post of, how the current uh, economy is. Um, what are the top traded items? You know, you could see like the the items that are going for the highest price, right? And you're also you can also see the items that are, have the most are, are the are the most posted on the trading post, the most supplied on the trading post. Which ones are the which ones are selling the most? And so you have a lot of extra information that auction houses in other games uh, don't provide. Now, with all of that uh, aside. There has been a lot of talk and forum posts and different things about is the economy broken and you know how how uh, you know how are you supposed to make money with this and all this because the supply is so high and um, it's interesting like I I'm not I'm not heavy into uh, I'm not I'm not an expert on economies or I'm not an economist um, so I you know I, I can't I can't offer a, a very highbrow you know explanation of how this all works but I I do have a lot of experience with economies and MMOs and I I think we're we're seeing. We're seeing some things that are um, a result of, of many different factors. One being that the game's just kind of launched, right? All right, so there's a lot of people that are farming materials or getting materials, and there's not a ton of gold in the game right now, right? Because we're only a couple weeks into playing. So the supply is obviously higher than, uh, than, than you know, the demand on a lot of these items. And there, that's leading to the prices being very, very low for certain things. Now, I do want to do a public service announcement real quick. Don't 
sell items on the trading post for one copper piece higher than they vendor for. That is insanely dumb, to put it bluntly, because I, I guess you're not realizing that there is a 5% charge, minimum of one copper, just to list the item up on the trading post. And then if the item sells, you take a 10% hit on the sale of the item. There's a, there's a cut that the trading post takes out of it. So there is no way you are making your money back if you are selling things on the trading post for one copper piece higher than you can vendor it for. So just stop doing that. Stop doing that right now because it's just – and the thing is it's not – Every once in a while that I see that, there are thousands and thousands of posts on there where people are trying to get that one copper piece higher than the vendor, and it's just not working. You're not making any money. You're losing money. So stop that. All right. So so rant over. Um, so so the economy at this is at this kind of weird state right now because we're still in the beginning, and uh, prices are are kind of low on a lot of items. And I, I could see like um, I I understand that some crafters you know, jumped in and they got their crafting all the way up to 400 and they're trying to put out these, you know, put up, put up these really hard to make exotics and stuff like that. And then they try to put it on the trading post and they see that there's other people that are putting it up there at like a loss for the materials that it cost, or maybe just a break even point in the materials. And it's kind of like, it's kind of frustrating, right? For those players who think, hey, you know what? This is a very difficult item to make. There aren't many people that can make them. Why are people selling them for so low? And, you know, I can see how that could be a little bit frustrating, but I think it's still a little early and people don't really know the value of certain things yet. And, uh, you know, it's going to take time for that to, to kind of work out. And as you see the leveling curve get higher and higher, right? Probably, I don't know what the average leveling curve is of a player, but you know it's not 80, right? There, most people are not at 80 yet. Um, you know, as we see that average start to move closer and closer to 80, the things at, the, at higher levels will, uh, you know, become more and more valued. So, um, so that's part of it. It's an early economy right now. The other thing is the trading post was delayed, right? We, we, it was for, for I don't know, for the first 10 days, maybe a little bit more than that. It was up and down. It wasn't working. People didn't trust it. You know, it wasn't really utilized. So a lot of a lot of people had a lot of time to just save up materials. And boom, when they when it finally became stable and put out there, there's a huge amount of supply. So that had an impact on how the economy feels right now. Um, I think the fact that you have more info than other auction houses. Um, Kind of, it definitely affects the economy, right? So, in a game like uh, Star Wars: Old Republic, where it was very, very difficult to use the Galactic Trade Network or auction house or whatever you want to call it, it was difficult to search. It was difficult to see things. You can only post ten things at a time. With all those kind of restrictions in place, it was actually really easy to make huge margins on some items because uh, a lot of people just, you know, didn't know how to find the things that they were looking for, or you know, or, or were too, too lazy to go about it because it was kind of difficult to, you know, the drop down menus were atrocious and different things like that. So what it does is it creates a situation where, you know, the person that really wants to pay attention and the person that really knows what they're doing and knows how to use that faulty system, they can turn huge profits, um, you know, basically preying on people that don't know. Uh, in Guild Wars 2, it's pretty darn easy to see what your items are worth. I mean, you can literally click on sell on trading post and it brings up all the items in your inventory and it could tell you basically instantly you know how much money you could get on the trading post uh, based on the buy orders that are already put into the trading post system so it's it, it's not going to be the type of system where you're you know pulling the wool over other players eyes left and right you know uh, it doesn't take much for people to be informed and that that changes how the economy is going to work so if people are coming in thinking Oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to totally rake people over the coals here because I'm gonna just you look at that. That's posted on the auction house. That's a huge error. You know, uh, uh, I'm gonna snag that and put it for four times the amount of uh, price. That's not gonna happen all too often in this. Um, at least from from what I've seen so far. Like in World of Warcraft, I used to be heavy into collecting the the little mini pets. Um, so I had I had you know 153 of them or whatever. So I would check the auction house every day for those rare pets to see if there was one that was low price enough for me to grab for my collection. And time and time again, you know, it didn't happen actually I, time and time again over the course of years, but uh it, it didn't happen often, but 
every once in a while I'd, I'd wake up, I'd log in and I'd look and I'd be like, <gasps> you know, somebody's selling this ultra rare, you know, pet, you know, for a thousand gold when, you know, I know it normally sells for 12,000 gold. So I'd immediately grab that and re repost it on the auction house. Those kind of situations may not occur in Guild Wars 2 that often. We'll have to see, you know, how that plays out. But I, I think the fact that players can, can see I think the fact that it's a global economy will make it so that there's not often times where certain items are just totally missing from the auction house. So when somebody's going to post it, they actually have a reference point. They'll see what other people are selling it for, you know. And uh, I, I just think with the information out there, you know, it's going to be harder to make those huge, you know, margins on certain things. Um, so, yeah, I, I think in general, the people saying that the economy is broken is probably way off. I, I think it just works differently than other games. I, I think it's going to take time to mature. This is a really interesting phase of the economy because the game's just recently released, and you will see items totally changing based on the average level uh, of the player base. You know, uh, I, I think, you know, what we've seen, like, for example, a lot of people leveled up and they got into like the 15 to 25 zones before their crafting disciplines were at the level where they were using the items they were getting. So iron ore and softwood logs and, and that, that second tier of items, there was a huge supply of it. And not many people uh, were, were using those items because their crafting disciplines were still using the level one mats. But, you know, that changes over time as, as, as the, the average level base goes up. The, the demand and the supply for different things will actually will actually shift. So there are definitely ways that you can go in there and find a, find a, find your little niche, find something that you know where, you know, the materials are cheaper than the the end product and you can actually turn, you know, a profit in there. I know that there are people doing that out there. I haven't been heavily invested myself in actually trying to make money through the trading post, but I also don't think the economy is broken. I do think there is a little bit of um there's a lot of people going in and not really knowing what the value of items are. And like I'm saying, just throwing things up there and not really understanding how the trading post works. So, I, I, you know, part of this video is to kind of try to inform that, hey, you might not want to sell things for one copper piece above the vendor because um, that's just not going to work out for you. And I know I harped on that again, but... Um, yeah, I think it's important. So anyway, uh, what do you guys think of the economy? What are you know? Do you have any tips or tricks for people who are trying to make some money? What are some of the items that you found were um, you know profitable to actually make or post on the trading post? What has your experience been? What do you think of this trading post? Um, let me know what you think. Post it in the comments field below, and that's going to be all for today. Uh, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. Give me a like. Give me a favorite, and you can contact me on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, and I'll put all that information on the, on the, on the, on the, on the screen. Yeah. So uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.